Hey guys, Ernie here and welcome to the Paleo Hiker MD channel. One of the coolest things about having a 3D printer is being able to make accessories for some of your favorite gear. Now if you like the outdoors and you like knives, chances are you have one from the company Mora or Mora Kniv. I think that's how you say it. Well, we'll just stick with Mora and if you're like me, you actually have more than one or two, you, you have a few. Well, stay tuned and I'll show you some awesome and easy 3D prints to pimp out your Mora and make it more functional. Thanks for watching guys. Now a quick word before we take a look at these about 3D printing and access to 3D printing. Now first off, 3D printers are much more affordable than they used to be. The one that I use is just over $200 on Amazon, a pretty good deal. So if you're interested, definitely take a look at picking one up. I'll leave a link down below in the description to the one that I use. Now let's say you don't want a 3D printer or have room for a 3D printer or have the money for a 3D printer. There is access in several places. A lot of cities will have maker spaces where you'll have access, either paid access or free access to a 3D printer. And most public libraries these days have a 3D printer, so make sure you check it out. You do not have to own a 3D printer to be able to get some of these designs. They're all free off of the internet from a website called Thingiverse. I'll leave a link down below to that website as well as to all the different items that I used and printed out for this video. Now for each of these prints, I'll let you know how much it weighs and how much filament it used, and we can deduce how much it will cost you to make one of these pieces. Now that of course is after the cost of the printer, but if you have access to one or you have your own, we're talking about just the cost of the filament. Let's check out these really cool mods. Now I'm gonna call these by the name in the Thingiverse file, which is online. These are what they're calling the Mora Companion Knife Sheath Ferro Rod Holders. Very simple design, as you can see. It just wraps around the actual Mora sheath. Now I have it here on my cans bool. You can see it's attached. I just taped it with some electric tape and you can see how easily you can add a ferro rod to your cans bool. Pops right in there. I also designed this handle for ferro rods and I have an entire video on how to make these ferro rod holders from scratch on Fusion 360. Now this is a robust uh, version. You can pop it right onto the robust without any problems. Any of these um, Mora cases or Mora uh, sheaths will work with this. You can put it so that the ferro rod's kind of angled out. You can flip it around where it's angled in. Whatever it is you want to do, I would recommend you do it with it out like that. The weight of this is five grams and the cost is 10 cents. Pretty darn good little product and an easy way to add a ferro rod to your Mora. This is the next one. This is called the Mora Companion Fire Steel Mount. Now, this one will work on multiple models as well, and I did not use it on the Companion. I used it on my Mora Garberg. It will come in a certain uh, shape, and what you do, very simply, is you heat this with a heat gun, and then it's really you know soft, and then you can mold it to whatever you want. I molded it to this Garberg, and you can see that it pops right on there. Okay, this is very hard to get out. I mean, if you, if you get it on there good, it is not coming off. Weight of this is 11 grams, cost 22 cents to make. I put a 5 16 ferro rod in here. That's pretty much the right size for this, 5 16 and it works extremely well. As you can see, you can use this uh, since you're able to heat it and mold it to whatever you want. You can use it with pretty much any Mora that you want. It's very strong, this thing's not gonna break, and uh, yeah, I like it quite a bit. Next, we'll look at the Mora Eldris. This is the Mora Eldris belt adapter. You can see that it, it basically will take your Eldris and make it a belt carry. Now you can carry the belt with this, you can buy it extra, but if we take this off, this will give you an idea of the precision that you can get with a 3D printer, even a $200 3D printer. You, it pops right on there, okay? and it has got very good retention from the standpoint of, um, of gravity. Now, you can adjust the size and you, you know just a little bit smaller and it'll pop on there really, really well, but you can see how easily you can take this Mora Eldris, which is hard to carry on your, uh, on your belt, and make one of these. You can buy one of these, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna weigh more than 11 grams and cost more than 22 cents. Now we're getting into a couple of really nice ones that I like, some of my favorites. This is the Mora Heavy Duty Ferro Rod and Lighter Holder. Okay, you can see it holds 
a big glider very um, very nicely. I mean, it's not coming out, okay? And it will hold a little bit larger. This is a 3 8 inch uh, ferro rod, so it's very, very nice. It's marked as the Mora Heavy Duty, but I can show you. This is just your basic 511 uh, Robust. It'll pop right on there. And guys, once it gets in there, I mean, I can pull it off. I mean, once it gets in there, I can pull it off, but it's not easy to pull off. This gives you the flexibility to carry a lighter and a ferro rod along with your Mora, and that is a pretty awesome. Now, well, this will probably cost quite a bit of money and weigh quite a bit if you bought one. Well, this one weighs 24 grams and costs a whopping 48 cents. Pretty awesome. Now, right along that same line, this one's just a little bit different. Again, using it with a Robust. This is a Craftline Robust. This is the Mora Heavy Duty Ferro Rod and Flashlight Holder. Holds my flashlight, pops right in there, and it, it'll allow you to, to, to uh, use the clip so it's not coming out. And then another 3 8 ferro rod. Really, really nice piece of kit. I like this because it gives you the functionality of carrying this light. Uh, I don't necessarily know that you need a lighter and a ferro rod. You can do that if you want, but that's the beauty of 3D printing. You can adjust these to your own liking. This is a really cool piece of kit. This one weighs a little bit less than the ferro rod and lighter holder, uh, just because it's using less filament. This one weighs 19 grams and costs 38 cents. This is what they're calling the more robust ferro rod holder. This is probably one of my least favorite prints I did, but I, I did it, so I'm going to show you guys. I have tape here because it is very thin wall. This wall is super, super thin and very easy to crack. I've cracked two of them, and that's why I, A, increased the amount of infill here, but even with that, it's still a little bit shaky, so I put the, um, the tape and it really keeps it nice. Now, this is designed to go on one of these robust. It will really go on any Mora because it just pops on like this and then you put it down and it just kind of dangles, okay? I don't really like it. It does dangle. It's not going to come off, which is nice. I mean, it's unlikely to come off, but I'm not a big fan of how it dangles. This will hold a pretty large ferro rod, uh, 3 8 for sure, almost a half inch, but definitely not a half inch. 3 8 is the biggest you want. This is... Uh, five grams costs 10 cents, and a lot of people will like it because it's um, it's just simple to add on. You don't have to tape it. You don't have to do anything like that, but you do want to keep an eye on it because I think they could easily come off. You could probably adjust the thickness just a little bit up here to let it kind of lock into place better, but nonetheless, a really nice, interesting add to any of your robust uh, Moras. Now, this is an interesting uh, print. This is called the Mora Ferro Rod Insert. Okay, you can see that it's just a little printed, almost triangular piece. You attach it to pretty much any of them, but it does fit the Companion and the Companion HD the best. It will hold a pretty small ferro rod, uh, one quarter inch ferro rod. This is a quarter inch ferro rod from Nathan uh, on eBay. Just pops right in there. You can just put this little bit of lashing around it and it hangs on really tight. I also printed this handle for the ferro rod, but you can see that it really looks pretty slick. You can flip this around if you want. I favorite going that way just because it's hanging down below the, uh, the level of this, and I don't like that, but you can do it either way that you want. This is the uh, Mora ferro rod insert. Weight is six grams, cost is 12 cents. Now last, we're gonna take a look at this. It, it kind of looks like your standard craft line, but it's actually the Mora chisel. You know, carrying around a larger sheath like this is, is kind of unnecessary. It has a really nice design to it. I just put a little piece of paracord there to uh, hold it. It only goes in one way because there's a bevel inside. If you try to put it in this way, it will not go in. It also would cut that. So this is nice that it pops right in just like that. And although this is not fixed, it's, it's pretty hard on there. You know, this is more for storage if you want to keep it out of the way. This is very nice. This is the Mora Chisel Sheath. Weight is eight grams, cost is 16 cents. So if you're wondering how I calculated the cost for all these, I basically used a one kilogram, roughly $20 spool of filament, and that equates to about two cents per gram. That's pretty accurate, and you can see that it doesn't take a lot of filament to make a lot of these things, 
and they're very inexpensive. The slicer that I use is called Ultimaker Cura. This is a free program. And whenever you slice your 3D print into a G-code, which is what actually prints off of the 3D printer, it'll tell you how long it takes to print it roughly, as well as how many grams of filament you'll use. If you want a little bit more details, all of these were made without any supports. And I used 20% infill on every piece except for two of them. One was a ferro rod for the Robust series, as well as the belt clip for the Eldris. Uh, basically, these failed with 20% infill. That equates to the fact that they broke. So I increased the infill and I've had no problem since. You can make them any color. There's all kinds of filaments. There's wood filaments. There's metallic filaments that actually attract a magnet. There's all kinds of cool stuff. I'm using PLA and I'm using 1.75 millimeter PLA. That's what I use pretty much all the time in my uh, printer with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Now, as I said earlier, all of these uh, prints are off of Thingiverse. They're free and they're basically designed by other people. But another awesome part about 3D printing is that you can design your own pieces. I downloaded Fusion 360, which is a 3D modeling program, and you can use it for free as long as it's for personal use and you only have a certain number of editable files. It's, it's kind of complicated, but trust me, you can use it for free and you can create anything you want. So I'm in the process of first off learning 3D printing and then starting to make some kind of one-off or custom gear, and I will post it to Thingiverse as well. So if you could design anything for one of your Moras, what would it be? I might check it out, try to make one. So leave comments down below of anything you think would be cool to add to this list of Mora modifications. Do me a big favor, guys. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up. It really helps spread things across YouTube, helps my channel tremendously. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscription button. And if you want to make sure you don't miss any of my videos, hit that notification bell and you'll be the first to know. So what do you guys think about some of this 3D printing content? I've had a good time with it so far. Hopefully you guys will like it. And if it's well received, I'll continue more 3D printing projects into the future. I really appreciate everybody's input. It really helps guide which way I take this channel. As always, guys, I appreciate you checking out the Paleo Hiker MD channel. Stay tuned for more videos soon.